Hi again, everybody. Welcome to Targeting the Youth. This is a segment on this channel that discusses the current Buffalo Sabres, 25 years old and under. So, I'm going to talk a few controversial names today, guys. Here is the clip we're going to talk about. Casey Middlestat. Yay or nay? What is going on with Casey Middlestat? For me, it's just a huge question mark. And I believe we're at the point in the development of our squad right now, guys, that we can't have question marks hanging over our head. That's just how I feel. I don't think management's on board with me at all about moving Casey. I just don't believe they are. I don't think Casey Middlestat's getting moved. And who would want to move Casey Middlestat when he's Charlie's favorite player? Right, Charlie? This is Charlie's favorite player, folks. We don't want to move Charlie's favorite player. <laughs> okay, let's look at his numbers. Okay, this is, um, this is the thing with Casey is, can we get a full season out of him? First of all, second of all, will he finally come into his own? He, you know, he's 24 now. He just turned 24 about, I don't know, five, six weeks ago. He's at the age now, guys, that you can't mess around no more. You just can't. Once you hit around 24, you got to start seeing some kind of glimmer of hope in the player. And for Casey, I don't know. I just don't know. I don't want to come off on this video like I'm trying to take shots at this guy. I'm not. I like his leadership qualities when he speaks. I do. I like how he speaks to the press. I do like that. Uh, it seems like off the ice, he has a real leadership about him as well. It's weird. It's just weird that his numbers have just never really grown yet, you know, yet. I don't know what to think. I, you know, I, I could picture us trading this guy and he goes and he has four straight goals, 30 goal seasons somewhere else. I could see that happening with Casey Middlestat. You know, I, I don't know what we should do, really. I'm, uh, here's why. I'm going to look at some numbers with you. Okay, so take a look. He has career 100 points now. That is, yeah, he has hit the century mark in points for his career in 231 games. So he's averaging guys, say, give, take about 35 points a year. If you want to be like fair about it, say 35 points a year. For a high first rounder, a guy that Botterill was so high on, I don't know. You know, I, I don't know if those numbers are ever going to pick up because take a look. It's the same thing as last year, pretty much. Six goals, 13 assists in 40 games. This year, 17 goals, 13 assists and 20, uh, uh, for 20 points in 36 games. Minus 14 last year, minus 11 this year. I just don't know. One thing I do like about Casey Middlestat, though, his takeaways and giveaway ratio is good. He's good there. So he, he has got better on the ice overall. I think, you know, overall when I watch him play, I kind of trust him when he's out there, but I just don't have any hope he's going to do anything. You know what I mean? It's like he looks lost some nights. Anyway, let's keep going. I want to show you the, um, we'll break down his uh, game summary. All right, guys, I clipped out his last 18 games. He scored the game before game number 19. He scored like, I think, three out of six games before that. One goal a game missed, a goal a game missed, goal a game missed, something like that. But the reason I clipped it out is because of the zeros. I want to point that out. He's only scored in one game in his last 18 games. He's got that two-goal game, as you see in game number 33 for Detroit, uh, against Detroit. That's it. And for me, I, this just doesn't seem like this is going to end. I don't know. I just don't know anymore with Casey Middlestack, guys. I, this is why you see me do trade videos with him, because I can't picture him with us long term with these kind of numbers, these, these kind of droughts. Same thing with Olofsson, guys. We're paying Olofsson like five million bucks now. He's getting Tuck money to do what he's doing. Alec, and Alex Tuck is doing what he's doing, you know? Think about it. Who's worth more, Tuck, Tuck or Olofsson right now? You tell me. I always look at the money. Homemade mocha, guys. Homemade mocha. So this is the thing. Yes or no, do we move Middlestat now? 
because his value, if he continues like this till he's 27, 28, his value is not going to be much. The fact that he's a first rounder and young is enticing to some teams. It is enticing. So do we move him? Because as much as I make videos and talk about moving him, there's a side of me that's scared that when we move him, it might be a mistake. And that worries me. It's one of those uh, what ifs syndrome when it comes to middle step. But Put it this way, I think we have enough talent that if we did get burned in a trade trading middle stat and we look back and say, oof, that was a bad mistake trading him, you know, we made it, maybe should have waited another year, then we can say then, you know, well, you know, we're still okay with all the talent we have, but yeah, would have been smart to keep him another year. He doesn't cost a lot. I didn't, I didn't clip out his, um, his, what do you call it? Because most of you know it's two and a half, right? His cap hit is two and a half. It, look, if he was making six million a year like Ocposo, I'd be freaking out, okay? Ocposo's way overpaid for what he brings, guys. Way overpaid, and the truth is, guys, I really hope Ocposo retires after this year. I know a lot of you like him and everything, he's slow. He's slow, he's too slow for this team, he is. And we better not put him on the first line again, even though that worked out for a few games. Please don't do it again, Granado, please. So I'm thinking, because we, we, it should be set in stone now, that Alex Tuck, uh, Jeff Skinner, and Tage are the number one line. That should be set in stone now. That's a better first line than when we had Eichel and uh, Skinner. This is better, this line. All right, let me just check. Uh, yeah, middle stat, yeah, two and a half this year, two and a half next year. It's an easy contract to move if we want to move it, guys. It is, he's 24. He's a first rounder, two and a half. Look how we felt picking up uh, Jost and Jost is making two million and we picked him up on waivers and we felt it was risk-free. So we could get something for Middlestat. We might not get it more than a second rounder though. You know, I don't know. Or might be able to trade him for a prospect. You know, I, nobody's gonna give us a first, a first rounder for him. That's not happening. Just something to think about guys. What do you guys say? Yes or no, do we move him? I'm lost. I'm lost with this one. I don't want to say yes, because then if we move him, I'm going to feel like an idiot. And I don't want to say no, because if he continues doing this, I'm going to feel like an idiot. <laughs> so, it's, you know, it's a catch-22. We need middle stat guys to start producing, and we need him to start producing this month, really. If middle stat goes through another sour month, I would try to put him on the trade block. I would. I would. Uh, I know he's one of our pieces, our young pieces and everything, but I, I would trade him. Right now I would trade him if it's my choice, but I can see why Granado Adams want to be a little patient too. You know, he did, he was like our best player two years ago when, when things were a disaster on this team. He really was, our, he stepped up that year. So let's hope and pray something happens with Middlestat soon. See you in the next one, guys.